Good. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless your friends of mine, relatives, and countrymen. Hallelujah. We're in Bible study with Children of Hope International Ministries. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you for those that's listening in, amen, on Facebook tonight. We bless God for you. If you're not too far away, you can always come to Bible study. Hallelujah. I know you're still in transition, but we bless God. I'm excited to be a servant of the King of Kings. He said he delights in the prosperity of his servants. So not only am I a Christian, I'm a servant. I serve God. I serve his his house, the house of faith, and all the things that he's calling for to push this gospel forward in a dark world. And to realize, and let people realize, it's because we're living in the midst of a fallen world. We don't have to live like the world lives. He says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So we have to be so mindful. Amen. So welcome, welcome. I, I, I have a scripture for you that just hit my, my head, hit my heart. Uh, I was reading a little study time today. And I said, Lord, have mercy. You got to be so mindful. Uh, even in the last days, uh, men will be lovers of themselves than more than lovers of God. It's just such a process. But Matthew 28, which we know is about um, the Great Commission, uh, in 28 and 16, I just want to get it in your hearing. <clears throat> it said, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, listen, he's got up now. He's risen. He's up. He's going. Understand, he was dead, and now he's alive. He told them, though, he told them that in three days I'll get up. The key we got to understand is it's hard for us to believe the word of God even today. But let me tell you, before we were written, the word was walking right between them, right in front of them, right with them. Eat the word, listen to me, the word was eating with them. And it, when he got up, listen to what he says here. He says, when they saw him, they worshipped him. So they think, oh, that's Jesus, y'all. And then it says, but some doubted. So he said, God, I want to admonish you tonight. Don't be in the midst of the sum. That when Jesus come into your presence, you doubt him. When Jesus come into your presence, you doubt him. It's not a time as Christians to doubt Jesus. Don't let your worship and all of a sudden and some still doubt it i said lord i don't want to doubt you if you said it in your word i believe it i'm standing on what you said he say some doubt it i am not in the number of some and i'm praying that you're not neither amen and amen so tonight we're going to talk about once again seven truths to help you face future your future not mine but your future with confidence with confidence. Can you say confidence? Confidence. There you go. Confidence. Man, when you say confidence, it will, in your body just feels good. Just strengthened. Confidence. You have confidence. That's what we're going to do today. We went over form last week. We had uh, God reveals his will through his word. Number two, Jesus and God's word are one. Number three, God's perfect will is for all people to be saved and to come into the knowledge of truth. And number four we talked about last week was the Bible is God's written testimony of what he has already prepared for us. And I want to go over that again a little bit. That number four, I'm going to hit four and then finish up. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for grace and mercy tonight. Thank you for who you are and what you're doing. We just magnify you. Our soul says yes. Our soul says yes. Create, us, create, create in us a clean heart, Lord. Renew a right spirit within us. We love you today. In the midst of our trials, our situations, our circumstances, even in the midst of our unbelief, God, help doubt my unbelief. We love you tonight. Come in the midst of this Bible study. Move as you see fit, God. More than anything else, we want to do your will and why we've been called and appointed for such a time as this. So we thank you tonight and we praise you for those that's in the sanctuary and those that's listening in. God bless you. Amen and amen. God bless you. All right. So we're going to talk about this here. Number four, the Bible is God's written testimony of what he has, get this, already prepared for us. 
his children. It's already done. It's already prepared. The word is God's way of teaching his family how to operate in his thoughts and in his ways so that they can enjoy all that the lordship, listen now, the lordship Jesus offers. The lordship that Jesus offers. I want to go to uh, Ephesians 2 and 10. Ephesians 2 and 10, people. Ephesians 2 and 10. It says, for we are his workmanship. All right? We are his workmanship. His own masterwork. A work of art created in Christ Jesus. Reborn from above. Spiritually transformed. Listen to me. Spiritually transformed. Renewed. You love them words, don't you? Spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used, ready to be used for good works which God, here you go, prepared for us beforehand. God is the kind of God that prepares before you get there. Oh, my God. Even though you're walking through perilous times, he said, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Meaning what? God didn't prepare something for you. He didn't tell you there was no enemy going to be around. He just said, don't give us the enemy a seat at your table. Huh? He said, I prepared this for you in the presence of you. Meaning as you eating, as you doing what God called, you got to point sometimes and say, devil, you're a liar. I know you're here, but God has prepared something. Good God. God has prepared me. Do you understand? Now, you understand this. I'm, in a few weeks or so, I'm going to be going to London, England. And I'm going to preach a gospel in a country I've never preached before. Understand me. Never been to London, never been to... I'm going to check out some sites first, believe you. But the key is, he's already prepared it. <laughs> oh, man. See, I'm, 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 I ain't going to lie, y'all. This West Side boy is so excited. He's already prepared it before I get there. Do you understand the magnitude of that? What kind of confidence do I walk in there with? Not my own. Holy Ghost. Faith of God. Unstoppable conference. I'm coming in with faith. Why? He's already prepared it. If we could ever learn how to believe what he wrote down. See, this is a love book for us in actuality. Genesis to Revelation. It's a love book for the people of God. And he already, he said, prepare for his children. I'm one of his children. And he's already prepared a way. I just, I just wanted to give y'all that there as I read the scripture. He prepared it beforehand. Do you realize he prepared this when I was, in, when I was doing stupid? When I was on the campus of Illinois State acting crazy? Do you understand? That, oh, Lord. I'm going to try to compose myself today with the Bible study. But you don't even understand. That's somebody behind bars that don't even understand me. But God has already prepared something when they get out. Yeah, I, I know. See, those are the things that's sometimes hard for us to believe about God because it's so infinite. We are so finite. We are so finite. He said a thousand years with him is just like a day. A thousand years with him, Patricia, is like a day. Good. Okay, okay, I'm going to read the scripture. If I could compose. Beforehand, taking path which he set. Taking path which he set. So that we would walk in them. Living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. So, when I go there, he's prepared it. So when I, even when I'm seeing the sights. Because I ain't going just to preach. I'm going to see sights and everything. I'm going to go to England. Uh, London, I'm, then we go to France. I want to see the Eiffel Tower. My wife wants that. She's been married to me for 40 years. So I told her, we, I put uh, her name in lights, and y'all, when y'all come into the church, y'all see her name in lights down there. See, I, I, and I didn't know it was going to be that way, but her name's in lights. <laughs> come on, preacher. Am I telling the truth? Thank you. So the key is now, God had prepared that. And then I got a bunch of saints going with me. You know the saints don't let Bishop go nowhere by itself. They, no, they ain't. They're like, oh, no. So we got to be hanging out in a whole other country showing for who Christ is. Because people, oh, wow, where you guys come? What kind of group? We believers. Ha! Then they're going to have a, man, I don't even want to talk no more. 
Because I see, I feel people getting jealous on, online. Oh, Lord, I say that. I might have to find a scripture. But God, in Old Testament, he enjoyed when he blessed his people openly and that the heathens got jealous. Because he's a jealous God. He likes to take care of his people openly. And do y'all understand? Some of you have been holding back some greater things of God because you're afraid of what people are going to say. <laughs> Woo, I'm going to tell you this right now. He gave me a, some, another, some more money, overflow, overflow for my car investment. I'm going to be driving me a new Lexus, at least newer than what I got. And I ain't going to be, I ain't, they're going to be like, ooh, what are they going to say? I don't care. <laughs> like, I care about what you're going to say about what God gave me. I went to lunch today, and I get, the guy said, man, Larry, you got here so fast. I said, you got to understand, I still do have the Lexus. He said, oh, God, I remember. Okay, listen, 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 listen. This thing is so real, it makes me want to get excited. But I'm, we're on number four, all right? We're on number four. Uh, the Bible is God's written testimony, okay? Uh, he prepared beforehand for his children. I want to give you Psalms 139, very favorite scripture, has become a favorite scripture of mine throughout the years. It, wasn't, it didn't start that way, but... I tell you, I just get excited. I get goosebumps and everything else when I read it in actuality. It is just, if you believe it. If you believe. Psalm 139 and 13. For, your, for you form my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You get that? Fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Do you, do you, you get this here, uh, seven truths? When, if you begin to believe this truth, number five, you would begin to think differently about yourself. You will stop paying your motivational speaker and open up the Bible. Because see, in actuality, I'm a motivational speaker too. I'm a bishop, I'm a pastor, I'm a friend. Don't talk to Sister Taylor, you know what you take. I, all of these things, do you understand? With the word of God. Understand me. God is not one dimensional. Body, soul, and spirit. He formed you, he made you even though they thought about aborting you. But God said no. Number five, number five. This is another truth, another truth. Oh, another truth, Bishop, another truth. Number five. The Bible is more than a history book. The Bible is more than a history book. It is, a, it is God speaking to you now, speaking to us now. God's word is alive. It is the living voice from heaven. You can fearlessly act on the written word of God. Just as you would if Jesus called your name and spoke with you personally. That's how powerful his word is. This book is greater and it's not a, just a history book. Did you give me that? A history book? No. Let me tell you about this book for a moment. Let me, give you, let me give you a good scripture about this book that some of you put on your coffee table. Some of you might put up under your coffee table. For some of you, you might have it on your uh, laptop. You might have it on your iPhone, your iPad, your drone, whatever, you know, whatever you have. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you use, okay? I'm an eye man, okay? I, I, but whatever, it is, you can open that thing up and it'll change your entire life. The word. The word. I mean, 
I don't, they don't, listen, 22 years of pastoring this church, they don't pay me enough to do what I do in the natural. Understand me well. Understand me well. And the older I get, no, it ain't halfway there. But man, because the congregation didn't call me. God did. He appointed me. He appointed me when I was in Ocean May's belly. Did you hear that? And he, he wrapped me up. And before you was formed in your mama's belly, I knew you. I've called you to do this. It was written down, set in place. Now, the key we got to understand, are you willing to walk in what God set in place? Because the scripture literally says, I lay before you life and death. Choose life. That's what I love about God. He ain't trying to make nobody. He wished that none should perish. Remember that? But he ain't trying to make, he not going to make nobody serve him. He ain't going to do it. So there's no need of us as pastors and leaders trying to make folk do what God called them to do. You can't. So let it go on you. Not less stress on you. They do what they do. You do what you do. Now I'm going to be honest with you. When you do what he called you to do, your life's going to look different than theirs. And I don't care if they got five jobs. Do you hear me? And then he had the audacity to say, I beautify the meek with salvation. So you won't be as stressed as they are. Have you ever met one of your old classmates? And they look at you, and you look at them, and you don't want to say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, come on, girl, you know what I'm talking about. You don't want to say nothing and be like, hey, how you doing? It's been a long time. And then they just say, what have you been doing? You look just like you did when we was in school. And you can't lie. Pat, you can't lie. So you got to say, well, I know, I'm, you know, I'm getting older too. But you're not going to come back and say, you look like the world and kick you. No, you ain't going to go back and do that. You ain't going to say that because you got to be nice and be like, you know what? Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. But you're not going to come back because you don't want to be lying to that person and say, man, the world. Because I've seen people, and I know the world, and beat, they just pop, pop. The world will beat you, y'all. And see, sometimes when he does to the people of God, they make it. They put facades up of why they might leave church or why they might do this here or go do this here. And really, in actuality, they don't realize the enemy is trying to set them up. For five, ten years from now, you're going to look at them and they'll be like, dog. I just wanted to drop that in there. Dog. And you think, oh, God had so much more. Have you ever saw a friend and you knew God had more? But you knew that God said, I labor for your life and death, choose life. Because with this fallen world, people are picking up whatever they want to and they feel like it's okay to do. That's what they want to do. And God said, I, that's not what I said. That's not what my word said, but I'm not going to make you. He literally said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Love and kindness have I drawn thee. Whew, that's kind of stuff. Man, he, he, he's a rapper. God's a rapper, y'all. <laughs> All right, we got to keep going here. I want to give you uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. That's the one that's going to bring this thing to pass for the word, please. Okay? Don't, don't run. Don't go nowhere. For the word of God is living and active, full of power, making it operative, energized, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than a two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and the spirit, the completeness of a person. He goes deeper, okay? God goes deeper. And of both joints and marrow, the deepest part of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts. Ooh, you can lie to everybody, but you can't lie to God, y'all because he goes deeper than what you're saying. Exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. You know, you wonder why sometimes why people do what they do? God said, I know, because I go deeper than what you do. They might smile at you like this here, and God said, don't believe it. You're being set up. You're being set up. That's why you got to be so mindful, especially single people. You got to be so mindful. You don't know who you're marrying these days. 
I thank God I married Sister Taylor when we was babies. We were just babies, just young folk. We were just young folk, loving God, hallelujah. You know, back in that day, they said, y'all was too young getting married and all that. Well, 40 years later, I guess they was, they was lying. <laughs> and a lot of times people tell you that, even though they're in church and they love God, they tell you that because they done had a bad marriage. Or their marriage is not good. And so they're going to tell you out of the experience instead of telling you what God's word said. He said, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Submit one to another. You follow his precepts and you're standing. Da, 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 da. You follow his precepts and you're standing. Ooh, we, I'm glad we're in Bible study tonight. Any questions while we're in Bible study? <laughs> this thing is just, it's, oh. Okay, did I, okay. The thoughts, did you get that? Thoughts. The very thoughts and intentions of your heart. That's why you say, Lord, clean my heart. Renewing me a right spirit, God. That's David. David wrote that in Psalm 51. David wrote that. And he's saying, Lord, I need you to go deeper than what I say. Because in other words, you know I'm a poor and I can talk and so woo, woo, woo. But Lord, I need you to go deeper than my conversation, deeper than what my tongue say. I need you to go to my heart. The invisible. See, that's why you, God said, thank you for, you know, you'll be giving uh, uh, offerings and, 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 and goats and and, 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 and pin, pin, pigeons and all that. Then he came to a point, he said, you know what? Render me your heart. Render me your heart. He said, I'm tired of all this. I need your heart now. And that's why David became the greatest king of Israel. I want your heart. He said, literally, God, uh, David is a man after my own heart. That's deep, people. I know you done read it. Saw the story and everything else. They put it on TV. But I'm talking about the word. He said, render me your heart. In other words, you can give all the offerings you want to give, 20%, 30%, 10%, 75%, whatever. He said, I want your heart now. I ain't going to put that front. I want your heart. I want to go deeper. I said, Lord, thank you. Let's go deeper. I'm going deeper tonight. I want your whole heart. Number six. Yeah, see, we are on number six, people. Number six. Faith is acting on the word of God. Did you hear what I said? Faith is acting on the word of God. Faith without works is dead. James said that to you. Faith is acting on the word of God. I need that word. Listen to me now. All right. I'm standing on your word, God. More than anything else, I need your word. The Father wants you to live out his word because it brings freedom. When you're living and walking in the word of God, it brings freedom. Jesus said, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. St. John 8 and 32. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. What's the truth? His word. The truth is his word. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes it's like, God, really? Man. But see, when you begin to meditate, uh, Joshua 1 and, 1 and uh, 9 says, meditate on a day and night. Because when you start meditating on the word and asking God to reveal himself to you, it's got to be more than just knowledge. We got a whole lot of knowledge, to be honest with you, okay? The World Wide Web. Uh, Google, you can put anything in there, and next thing you know, what you got? You got that knowledge. You got, you got all the knowledge, right? But it's time for the people of God to get revelation. Yeah. You understand? It's time to get revelation. Knowledge comes from the books, the experiences, and things that you've had. Revelation knowledge comes from the Holy Spirit. God sends it down. Do you understand? So you, we get so caught up when people knowledge but I get caught up with the revelation. Because have you ever read a scripture? And you didn't memorize it, you know it. And then one day you sit in your quiet time and you read the scripture and you go, whoa! Yeah. Have you ever had a whoa? Have you? Oh man, I've had them. I thank God. You go, whoa! He said, I didn't see that. Revelation knowledge. So I think you need to cut down some of your worldwide web and get into your revelation knowledge. 
Understand me. Cut it down. I have to cut it down. I told sister that I can't. I mean, it's too much. You're in this. You're in that. You're in that. People want to be on your friend or, or whatever. That link in. This is that. I don't know half them people. Don't you know what I'm saying? I hope somebody listen. I can't, are you serious? That's just too much now. I don't know if you saw the movie. Marcus, what's your movie? The guy that played God. Bruce Almighty. Bruce Almighty. If you ever saw Bruce Almighty, if you saw Bruce Almighty, remember <laughs> he was gonna be God. And all these, look at everybody laugh right now. Of course, we we find that we can't. Uh, everybody's asking, everybody's praying, and, and Bruce is like freaking out, like I don't want to hear y'all stuff. I just going wow. What it? Got computers, it didn't hold it. Got files, it didn't hold. It. It's just too much. And <laughs> those are the things that you realize we ain't God. And then it makes you feel like, how do you keep all of it straight? And then you, you wrote it down and you had the audacity to say what? I never sleep nor slumber. He says, I never sleep nor slumber. And he wrote it down in the word. You know how somebody said, do you got the Polaroid? He got the word. You can go back and look at it. He said it. I never sleep nor slumber. In other words, I got this. But we couldn't do it. Think about it. All the stuff that God tried to do. And then he got real. People were praying for what? To win the lottery. Remember that part of the movie? They wanted to get that lottery. All of a sudden, everybody won the lottery. Just millions of dollars. Just, just crazy stuff. He just said yes to everybody. God does not say yes to everybody. And I thank God he done it. I ain't lying. Don't tell him where I'd be if he just said yes to some of them crazy prayers I had. Let's be honest. <laughs> You'd be like, ooh, I'm God. He didn't say yes to that. Had somebody in the day say, Larry, you probably, you've been a president of a bank by now. I said, man, hey, I'm thanking God that he did not answer that prayer. <laughs> I ain't going to say it because I wouldn't have be preaching all over the world like this here. I ain't going to be no, I ain't going to think no lie. But I prayed it. And I thank him that he's God. So watch yourself what you pray for. Because some of the stuff you're praying for, you ain't going to get. So he's going to say no. And then hold on, hold on. He said, in the biblical text, he said, you don't even know what to pray for. Did, Patricia, I got a master teacher here tonight, people. I got a master teacher. Is that what he said in his word? He said, you don't even know what to pray for. And then he had to, that's say, listen here. I interpret your moans and your groans. He said, I interpret your moans and your groans. And you don't even know what to pray for. Some stuff you pray for, you bet that God, you didn't give it to you because you wouldn't want to throw it back by now. Wouldn't you? Don't look at me like that. That's what he said, y'all. That's what he said. Interpreting your moans and your groans. Did I read my hit? I read my moan. I'm on number six, right? Okay. Number six. Then it says, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Thy word is truth. That's St. John 17 and 17. Your word is truth. Don't get it twisted. There is absolute truth, and that's God's word. There is absolute truth. I know in your psychology classes, sociology, and everything else, you try to apologize. The word is truth. The word of God is truth. And that's what keeps you moving, keeps you going. It motivates you. Your worship, your worship to God, to give him honor, to praise him, to magnify him. It's an amazing time to glorify and magnify God. And with confidence, understand these seven I'm giving you tonight, seven truths are about the fact of you going, continuing your process, not dying and going to heaven, hallelujah, but continuing your process, but have confidence in your life. There's something about confidence, y'all. You, you know what? You have walking that kind of confidence, you won't be walking like that. You say, Lord, I want to walk in confidence. I want to be straight, erected. I want to trust you even when the pain is there. You understand? You want a confidence for what you're doing. When you have confidence in what you're doing in your life, it eases stress. Okay? When I done prayed about something or did something or something God tell me to do in ministry or even in my own personal lives, when I have confidence in it, don't mess with me. I'm there. I'm, fl I'm boom. I'm right there. I'm locked in. They just say I'm locked in. Bam. Right there. But when you're wishy-washy, you can't get locked in. 
When you're wishy-washy, you cannot get locked in because you don't know. You're afraid. Because what happens is God done told you something, and then you see something different than what God said. What do you do when that happens? You become unstable in all your ways. God has said some things. You stand on what he said and then go with it. Because some stuff, to be honest with you, you can't even handle. I can't even handle. There's some stuff in my ministry that I couldn't have handled when I started my first two to three years of ministry. But now after 27 years, oh, yeah, I can handle it. I can deal with it. God knows that. And sometimes we think we can handle stuff that we can't. And then we get anxieties, and then we jump before our time. We jump before our time. And you say, God, if I would have waited, if I would have just stayed in there. That's what happens. You want to you you get some confidence in what God said and walk in it and have that kind of confidence. Don't allow the enemy to take away your confidence. Where your confidence come in? The word of God. Trust in him and believe in him taking these seven uh, truths and walk in them. Don't just write, to put notes down. Don't just write it down. Don't just try to memorize it. Walk it out. Walk it out. And when you begin to walk that out, man, you get a confidence. I remember years ago, uh, I was preaching and someone said, uh, Pastor Taylor, where do you get that confidence? I said, it ain't mine. It's God's. It's God's. One thing I want you to understand is you go forward and there's a greater blessing on some of your lives. They're going to come forth. Just keep giving them glory. Keep magnifying them for it. Because understand this. We're nothing without him. We're nothing without him. Don't, don't ever let the enemy get you twisted. And because you know men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. So we're in the last days. So he will try to get you twisted to think that you have done something. And you really haven't done anything. It's all because of his grace and his mercy. And when you keep that in the forefront, it's a lot easier in your life as you continue to go to be ever mindful because without him we can do nothing there is no good thing in the flesh understand me the flesh is going back to the dirt thing hands down bottom line what you see on that is just outside shell that the lord has that, 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 that the lord has put you in this is outside the true you was on the inside he said what when he made man in, in genesis he was just just some dirt some clay and then he did what? Grew the blood of life. And he became a living soul. That's where it comes from, saints. It comes from him, it goes back to him. And if you understand that and believe that, then you want to allow the spiritual father, the, the father, our heavenly father, to strengthen us as we go. That's how you get stronger in the, in the, in the faith. This word, these seven truths will strengthen you. Amen? Amen. All right, I'm almost done. We might even get out here early tonight. I ain't been out early in a long time. Have a name. We haven't been out early in a long time. Have a good. Okay. Number seven. Why he came. Of the truths, why he came. He came that we might have what? Life. That we would have life. That's why he's here, saints. He didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. He wanted to bring the world back to what Genesis was all about. He really did. That's what he wanted. I mean, understand this. Let me give you a little background on this number seven and why he came. And we'll read the scripture. But God had an idea. Okay? Way before the enemy even thought about it. God had an idea. He created the heavens and the earth, right? He spoke the worlds into existence, all right? This is God, boom, boom, the days and all that. Created male and female. God did that, male and female. He knew what he was doing because he's God. And he wanted someone to have conversation with besides the angels. There was angels, okay? He said, let us make man in our image, okay? Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And as he made man in his image, he put the clay, he blew the breath of life, and then he said, I'm going to put him in a garden. And in this garden, we had everything we needed. Think about it. In this garden, we had everything we needed. And the only thing he said was tend to the garden. 
Work the garden. Be fruitful and multiply. This garden, you, you got it made. You can eat every tree around here. It's yours. He said, there's this one tree I don't want you to mess with. And this is why I think we need to really learn how to have patience with God. Because I believe, personally, God would have let us eat of that tree later on. Okay? He said, but don't eat of it. Because you shall surely die. Okay? But everything was straight. He had everything you needed. Of course, then somebody asked somebody, what would happen if money was not an object? What would you do if money was not an object? I thought about it. I said, I'll be doing just what I'm doing. <laughs> if money, what, what am I do? Right, if I need some money, he give it to me. He supplies all my needs according to what? His riches and glory, not the economy. I'm like, ah, I want to still preach. I want to still teach. I want to be a bishop, though. I don't want to be the senior pastor. I do. I, I would. I'll, I'll pay somebody. <laughs> but I would be bishoping all over the world, man. They'd be like, what bishop that now? Spain. I don't even speak the languages. But God would have an open door for me. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? He would just go boom. South Africa. Oh, I'll call Pastor Muhammad and tell him I'm going to be there for a month. Oh, they would freak out. The whole congregation would probably freak out. The whole denomination would freak out. I'll be there for a month. Bishop, what's going to I say, don't worry about it. God's got it covered. Center of Hope is growing. International ministry. He got me out here. Godly. Wouldn't that be something? Wait on it. But the key is... We don't have patience. We don't have patience. And then, as uh, the Sunday school lesson, we have this issue that we thought or we think that God is holding back something on us. And we're scared we might miss out. Don't allow the enemy to trick you to think you're going to miss out on something. He allowed, he told, the enemy told Eve, he said, no, if you eat it, then you'll be like God. So got her thinking she's missing out on something. I say to you tonight, even in the midst of Bible study, what is the enemy putting up in your face to make you feel like you're going to miss out on something? And that God already had you. She thought she was going to miss out. We think we're missing out. So we jump too fast. And we miss out on some greater things that God has for us. Staying there long enough. Years ago, I was working. And uh, me and uh, the boss was a little different, this and that. And. And the Lord put in my spirit one day because I was assistant. He said, don't worry about it because one day you're going to be the manager. Literally, he said, you're going to be the manager. Then what you going to do? And you know what? I pulled back. I began to submit to another level. Do, do, do. Because I, I realized one day I'm going to be managing my own branch. I stayed in there long enough. Of course, the story goes on. I manage my own branch. Well, somebody, a first lady told me that years ago, too, when I was a minister. And she said, Larry, be ever mindful. What happens when you get folks like this? Pat, you know who told me that. Maddie P. She said, be mindful. How you gonna, you treating them? How folks going to treat you when you become the pastor? I said, Maddie, I'm just a deacon. I ain't going to pastor nobody. But the, the truth, it comes to pass. Because then I become a pastor. So you got to be so mindful when you're under. Because when you're starting to do stuff that you, God did not ordain it to be, then you do it, and God said, what's going to happen when you have a place, when you have authority? It's going to whoop your pillow to post, and you wonder why. Be ever mindful, saints. You're not missing out on anything when you're walking in what God has called you to walk in. You're not missing out. Sometimes you think because you're a Christian and this and that. Now you say, well, I don't have a husband because I didn't. I told this boy I wasn't going to give him none. Or I, I won't have this here. I won't have that. You ain't missing out on nothing. Maybe some diseases and a beat down. You got to be ever mindful. You're not, when you trust God to that next level, you'll realize he ain't holding nothing back from you. But Eve went and ate it because she thought he was holding something back. That's how the devil is. 
Understand, the enemy has no different tricks than what he had in the garden, y'all. Same, same, same. John 10.10 10 says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And that's what you see in the world. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. God is saying to you and saying to us tonight, I came that you may have, meaning what? You got a choice. I love God. We, you have a choice. I came that you may have life. If you want to, you can have life. Or you can have the kills, destroy, and steal. He said, but if you deal with me, you will have life. Which one do you want? And then in the midst of it, he says, you will have it, and you'll have it more abundantly. He said, you'll have it more abundantly, and you'll get it God's way, the righteous way. Be mindful of that. Philip, I mean Philip, uh, Philippians three and three. I want to read this to you. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a close. We're gonna get out of here at least ten minutes early. <coughs> I gotta get a drink off of that. For we are the circumcision, who worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus. And have, listen to this, no confidence in the flesh. Did you get that? And we have no confidence in the flesh. Don't be afraid to say it. No confidence in the flesh. Philippians 3 and 3. Write it down. Face online that a day. Write it down. 3 and 3. Don't put so much in it. That's why we're a ministry of balance. A ministry of balance. Spiritually and naturally so. I want to read for you, just for your hearing tonight. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature. Because I have refused him. See the things that we look at in the natural? This is uh, God talking to Samuel about Saul, if you're ever mindful. Refused him, for the Lord does not see as men sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but God, but the Lord looks at the heart. But the Lord looks at the heart. You can get a lot from that scripture. Because understand, when Saul first got appointed king of Israel, he was taller than everyone else there, a head taller. Do you understand? For some reason, in the natural, that's what they gave those attributes when they put him in. But guess what? They tuck him down with those attributes. Ooh, God. What you might think is so great and you got in the natural, God said, don't worry, that's not what I came for anyway. I'm going deeper than when you first became king. Now you're done messed up the heart. You still that tall, you still that strong, but your heart is messed up. Your heart is messed up. Yes, you intellectual. Yes, you smart. Yes, you got money. Yes, you this and that. Yes, you done did that. He said that same thing. But when they put you up, I'm taking you down. Because why? Your heart done got messed up. Man, that's a word right there. I can take that on the road, boy. I might preach that in Atlanta, in, in uh, London, if I have a little side, side show. Do you understand what I'm saying? What he just showed forth in this one, he said, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance. But when he put him up, he did talk about his appearance. If you go back to Samuel, do you understand? Oh, my God. I did. See, sometimes you just get that woof. God said, woof. He blows on it. I said, my God, he used that. He's a head taller. He's this strong, Samuel, all that. I mean, uh, Saul. And now he's coming down. And God said, that's not what I'm looking at. I done found a man after my own heart. He's a ruddy old lad. Bam. Ooh. God desires for you to know him. He wants a relationship with you through his son, Jesus Christ. That's what he wants. To achieve that, he provides his word. 
begin to think about these truths that God desires for every believer to know. As you do, his will for your life will become crystal clear. His will for your life will become crystal clear. And you walk in a whole different way. You won't be confused about what God's desire for you. You'll be confident. You'll be confident in what his word has already told you. What his word has already told you. So often we're looking for the will and this and that. And God said, you stay in my word. It will become crystal clear. But what happens is our flesh pulls us down. I'm going to be honest with you. Our flesh, what we see around us, people around us, what other folks' lives are. He said, I made you individual. Why are you looking to your left and your right of what's happening in other people's lives? That was not I called you for. Think about it. Man, I remember people were buying houses when we graduated, me and the first lady. We didn't have no money and so on and so on because she had another year to go and all this here. And it was friends and man, they got these big houses and woo, woo, woo. And we was like, wow. He's like, do y'all live in a house? Are oh, y'all still in an apartment? Oh, my. I'm like, you look. But do you understand what I'm saying? But that's with them. And we had to understand that God had some processes for us to go through. Do you understand that? So when you look and say, well, she's married, he's married, he's not, she, that ain't you. Stay focused. If you don't, he's going to slip your way. And you're going to go through some things. Listen to me well right now. I prophesy to some folks, listen. You're going to go through some things you never had to go through. But you're going to go through it now because you didn't wait. You thought you was missing out on something. You thought you were missing out. But God knows how to make up time. Years down the road, time got better. I had a condo, my own condo, refinances, paid off my student loan debt, Sister Taylor's student loan debt. Both of them got paid off. We still had a house. And then the Lord had an audacity to buy us another house. So now we got our, our own big, nice house with a condo. And somebody paying rent. What do friends say now? They still live in there. They ain't say nothing. They ain't got nothing to say. Because we got two houses. But you got to wait on God. Quit trying to keep up with the Joneses and the whoever else is you're trying to keep up with. You be you. And if, <laughs> you be you. That's Charles' book. You be you. Quit trying to be somebody else. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I can be the best Larry Taylor in this whole wide world. But if I kind of copy somebody else, it is not going to be good for me. It's not going to be good. You be who God has called and ordained you to be. Whether they talk good about you or bad. Listen, the key you got to understand from this, for me, as a pastor, they talked about Jesus. Where he at now? On the right hand of the Father, making an intercession, getting ready to come on back and get us. Come on now. And they talked about him. Crucify him, crucify him. Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh, Lord. That's what they did with Jesus. I'm telling you tonight, get these seven down. Listen to me. Get these seven truths down. Meditate on them. Break it down. You know you, know you deep anyway. Break it down. Get it. And then start living it out. Live out the fruit of the Spirit. Don't just memorize them. Where your kindness at? Where your self-control? Where your patience? Where your love? Where your faith? Let's not just memorize scripture. Let's live out scripture. We become epistles read of all men. That's what the Bible says. And that's a great place to be. And what you do then is show the world Jesus. That's what we've been called to do, to show the world Jesus. Because that's why I tell you all the time, when you came to the altar and gave up your life, and you repented from sin, and said, Lord, save me, I want to be saved, you just gave up your life. You gave it up. That's it. What Pat used to be, though, when that, my friend said, uh, uh, Bishop, you, you could be a president now. I gave up that life. He said something else. 
And I didn't miss nothing. I didn't miss a thing. And I'm excited about it. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? So be ever mindful as you go forward. Take these seven truths, put them up, put it in your pocket, put it in your head, sleep on it, whatever it takes to live the life that Christ called for you. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a hand, praise. We done. Look, I got five, well, seven minutes. I did. It is a little bit earlier than usual. So we bless God tonight. God bless you. As I close tonight, be mindful of the truths. I'm praying for your confidence in God. That's what I'm going to pray for tonight as I close. Your confidence in God. I'm praying for your confidence. And there dwelleth no good thing in the flesh, so you got to point yourself to who? Jesus. All things are possible through him. So as you go forward tonight and continue to walk in what God called you for, to those that's on, online, amen. God bless your life. I pray there was something said or done tonight in this Bible study that will put you over and say, Lord, I want to do what you've called me to do. I want to take your truths and walk in your truths. Not just memorize it, not just read it, but God, I want to walk in it. And then one of the greatest things I can tell you is when you begin to live your life the way Christ has ordained you to live, it's the best thing that can ever happen to you. Because when the world is going mad and people are hurting and there's so much stress in the lives of people, you can say, you know what? I'm good. I sleep good every night. Unless my grandson jumps in my bed, I want to get him. <laughs> but the key is, love the Lord tonight. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for grace and mercy and kindness for those that's listening in tonight. Thank you for you, what you're doing in the lives of these people. I can't see them in the physical right now. But Lord, I believe in what I'm saying got deeper than what they've been going through in the situations and circumstances in their life. So I speak life to them tonight. I speak that they would get up in the morning and say, Lord, take all my cares and I cast them upon you. I pray for confidence tonight in, their, in the word of God, not in their self, but in the word of God. And as they continue to walk in who you called them to be, God, they will get stronger and stronger in the supernatural. We're not praying for more knowledge. We're praying for revelation tonight. Lord, we need a revelation of who you are and what you're doing in our lives. So we thank you for that today. We repent before you. And we say yes to you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you, thank you. Amen. It's offering time. Amen. It's offering. You uh, can pay online, push pay. Uh, you can drop it off. Use a tie envelope. Whichever way you do it. We thank God for you. Thank God for you supporting ministry. In the midst of this pandemic praying for you. Be encouraged, those saints. I believe that God wants to use the people of God to encourage the dark world. I'm good. I believe God wants to use the people of God to encourage the world, okay? That's why he's placed all this in you and inside of you. So be mindful of that. Uh, when they see you standing strong and uh, living for the Lord, they get encouraged, even if they talk about you or have other jokes about you, believe me, they watch your life. That's what I tell Patricia all the time. Uh, uh, Pastor Pat, I call her, of the outreach. And it, God's got something. He sees your life, and because of that, some people are getting saved. In actuality, are walking closer to God. So be mindful of that. Hold your offers up, those that's listening, those that's in the sanctuary. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for grace and mercy and kindness. Thank you for each and every giver today, God. 30, 60, and 100 fold. In Jesus' name, rebuke the devourer for the tie pair's sake. Amen and amen. All right, God bless you. I'm done. I spent. You got five minutes. I'm good. Five minutes. Yeah, it's dark. All right. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for grace and kindness and love. Thank you for everyone that has listened tonight, those that's in the sanctuary tonight. I pray for the individual homes tonight, God. 
that you would bless their households like never before. I pray for the health in their bodies and in their minds. In Jesus' name, send forth a spirit of confidence in you like never before, that they would walk in what you've called them to walk in. See the manifestation and the fruits of what you've called and appointed them to do and to be. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, and we are praying for revelation. Thank you for knowledge, but we need revelation. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.